Welcome to our lockdown lowdown um, series um, that we're putting together this year. Um, today we're out in, near Koolanong uh, in the Victorian Mallee and we're looking at one of our trial sites that's focused on pulse inoculation and, um, and also nitrogen fixation. So we've got four crops here um, at this site. We've got chickpeas, lupins, lentils and also vetch. And um, for each of those crops, we're trialling um, some different inoculation strategies, either comparing uninoculated um, pulses um, to peat-based products and also granule-based um, granule products. So this particular site um, is on a sand hill um, and we've also deep ripped this sand hill. So we're seeing what um, additional um, benefits can be gained out of uh, deep ripping plus inoculation. So prior to um, putting this trial in, we measured um, the amount of uh, end fixating, end fixation bugs in the soil and what it showed was um, that the chickpeas um, and the lupins um, had very few bugs in the soil um, but the lentils and the vetch um, had very high numbers and we're probably not going to see an inoculation response uh, in, in those crops and that's what we have seen in the trial. Uh, we'll see big differences between the nil and the inoculated treatments in the lupins and the chickpeas, um, but we haven't been able to see a big difference between the lentils and the vetch uh, between any of the inoculation treatments. Um, so what we're looking at here is we're looking at, um, on my left, is a nil treatment. Um, so that uh, didn't have any inoculant applied and we've only um, been able to measure um, about two um, nodules per plant um, on my left. On my right, um, with a peat-based strategy, um, we've measured about 12 nodules per plant um, on this um, treatment over here. So big difference in nodule number. Um, and you can slightly see some differences um, within the crop um, with, the, um, with how it looks. Uh, we've got a little bit less biomass over here by the look. We're also seeing a lot of um, yellowing of the and reddening of those yellow um, lower leaves. So pretty distinctive sort of nitrogen stress, particularly now that we've had 60 odd mil of rain over the last two months here. Um, starting to see some nitrogen stress um, in the pulse crop, uh, in the uninoculated treatment. Where over here, um, this uh, treatment um, looks a lot greener and a lot healthier all the way up and down the stem. So hopefully this, uh, with this um, improved amount of nodules on the plant roots, we'll be able to pick up some extra growth and yield um, over the next month or so. Um, and really respond to those uh, recent rains uh, a lot better. So another comparison um, is the difference between um, granule products and obviously the nil inoculation. So we've got granules over here, which was a tag team granule um, on my left. And this time I've got the nil treatment on my right. So just like we're seeing in the, um, in, in the peat inoculated plots, um, our nil treatments have produced very few nodules on the roots, only one to two. Um, where we've been able to get 12 to 14 um, nodules on the roots um, following our um, tag team granulated product. So that's really good news that we're seeing um, that this uh, granulated product is performing just as well as peat in the trial. Um, perhaps in um, dry sowing situations where you're not sure about peat survival in the soil, um, these granulated products um, such as a tag team have shown some um, yeah, really good promising results over the last couple of years now. So um, we've also got a comparison here between lupins and um, in lupins the nod difference between nodules was uh, much greater than even in the chickpeas. So on my left we had an uninoculated treatment. Um, here we only measured about one nodule per plant. Um, but on my right, um, this was an inoculated with um, peat. Um, we've been able to get up that up to about 30 nodules per plant um, with the peat-based um, inoculant. So a big difference there. And I think even greater than what we saw in the chickpeas, um, both a biomass reduction and also um, that sort of nitrogen stress showing up in the crop, yellowing lower leaves um, compared to this side. Uh, which is um, um, quite a lot greener as well. So again, we've got another comparison between um, granules on my left and also um, the nil treatment on my right. Um, this time in lupins, using a nodulator granule this time, um, we've been able to get 20 to 30 nodules um, per plant um, in the lupins um, with that treatment in comparison to our nil um, with no inoculant applied, um, we only got one to two nodules per plant, similar to the chickpea. 
Okay, so we talked before about the soil test that we did at the start, showing that um, there was a low probability of an inoculation response in the lentils. And um, yeah, that's what we've seen. My left is a nil. Again, we've got the peat inoculated on my right. And both of these treatments had around that 20 to 30 nodules per plant um, on average. Um, over behind us is the vetch. Um, and the vetch, again, similar response. Um, about 40 to 50 nodules, whether it was inoculated or uninoculated in that treatment, in that crop as well. Um, so the soil test um, is, is, is pretty useful. And given that this paddock had vetch uh, in it only two or three years ago, um, it's not surprising that, um, that we've got high numbers of um, um, end fixing bacteria in the soil uh, and therefore uh, we're not seeing the inoc inoculation response in these two crops as opposed to lupins and chickpeas, which require different um, groups of um, inoculation, um, and therefore um, we're seeing a response in those two crops. That's a bit of a wrap for this uh, end fixation and inoculation trial uh, here at Kulanong. Um, some of the other measurements, we've just recently taken biomass assessments, um, and hopefully we're gonna be able to measure differences in total nitrogen fixed uh, in the crop um, later on. And obviously we'll be measuring grain yield on this as well. So stay tuned to um, MSF activities and, um, and the MSF website. 